Okay. Uh, good evening, students. So today, actually, I'm going to show you the instruction from the branch and missing control group. Okay. So what we have in the instructions in the branch and missing control group are like jump instruction, JMP, jump conditional instruction, means jump with different kind of conditions, with carry, without carry, with, uh, with uh, so if I click on this, it will be clear. So NJ, jump on zero, non-zero, jump on zero, jump on no carry, jump on carry, jump on parity event, jump on parity order, okay? So these are the flag conditions that we can use with jump instruction. Okay. So here we have jump instruction also. In the jump instruction, you don't need to uh, use any conditions there. Okay. But in jump conditionally, here there you have to use some conditions. So these are the jump instruction. And what is the use of jump instruction? Is just to check the condition and then jump accordingly that is the jump with condition and if you just use a uh, simple jump unconditional instruction that is jmp then that will only that will only be used for just simply jumping from one step one location of your program to another location okay so jump jmp is used to jump from one location of your program to another location and jump conditional will be used to jump from one location of your from your program to another location depending upon some given conditions so this is the jump instruction and then there is call instruction call unconditionally and call conditionally okay so what is that so call instruction is called unconditionally c a l n call unconditionally so here you can call a subroutine whenever you invoke this instruction in your program it will be used to call a subroutine so what is subroutine subroutine means suppose you have to do some specific uh, task in your main program you can write instead of writing that thing in your main program you can write that thing uh, separately okay so that uh, as it is a very important task so you are writing it separately so that there will be no error while writing this task okay that is the one use of writing a subroutine or you can if you if you are writing a lengthy program where uh, you have you are actually writing many a times a particular set of instructions instead instead of writing particular set of instructions say 10 sets 10 set of instruction you are writing repeatedly in your main program instead instead of writing repeatedly in your main program those instruction you can write those instructions separately in a subroutine and call that subroutine whenever it is required to execute from your main program so this way if you uh, if you separate those pain lines from your main program to subroutine what actually is the gain of your program first of all it will reduce the size of your main program and second thing that it will be more easy to understand by the programmer and any other user what is going on in your program okay so th that is the use of call instruction and you can also call your subroutine using call on different conditions like this call on non zero call on zero call on no carry call on carry call on parity even call on parity on so these are the conditions by which you can invoke invoke this instruction depending upon different conditions of your flag so these are all flags so flag conditions it is written uh, depending upon flag condition you can also use call on carry call on non carry no carry call on zero call on no zero call on parity event call on parity or these are this type of instruction in your main program okay so this is the use of call instruction you can uh, call your subroutine using uh, depending upon the different conditions of flag or unconditionally you can also call your subroutine but whenever you are actually calling a subroutine at that time you have to remember in that subroutine you have you have to remember that in that subroutine you need to use 
the return ret return instruction okay this return instruction you need to use there why because you you are actually transferring the main program to your subroutine so once the subroutine all the instructions of that subroutine program are executed it should return back to your main program so for that reason you have to use ret instruction at the end of your subroutine so that your program will come back to your main program from the set of subroutine program that is the use of ret instruction so ret instruction is actually return instruction it is used for returning from the subroutine to main program you can return with different conditions or you can return unconditionally so it is better to use unconditional return because you have to have return from your subroutine from your subroutine to main program so in that case you have you you need to use ret instruction there you cannot use this return with conditional instructions okay return with conditional instruction will affect in different set of programming types but here in normally what we are doing we are just calling a subroutine execute some lines of code then return to the main program okay because returning to the main program is mandatory one from your subroutine okay so that is the operation that we can do using return instruction so jump call return these are the very important instruction while writing a long lengthy program with different complex logic okay because you have to use different kind of jump call or return instruction okay and there you can see that push and pop these two instruction basically used whenever you are using stack memory so stack memory actually what what is stack memory actually do you have any idea what is actually stack memory can you tell me i hope you got some idea about the stack memory because i have spoken many of many things related to stack in our theory class so stack memory actually used during program execution okay and it is totally uh, depend it, it, the use of stack memory is totally depends upon the programmer right so suppose you are the programmer you, you want to use stack for different purpose so wh what is the main purpose of using stack so the main purpose of using stack is to to store those data crucial data very importantly and uh, uh, here this thing very uh, give your attention to this particular sentence that i am going to say that stack memory is used to hold very important and crucial data of your program okay why i am saying this thing because whenever you are uh, you are actually inserting this call instruction in your program at that time your stack memory is used okay why stack memory is used because you have to return back from your main program you have to return back uh, from your uh, subroutine to main program so how you will return back if you don't know at which address where you have to return back okay so returning back means return to particular address location so which address location will you return back that address location for a 085 simulate uh, in 085 processor will store into the stack memory okay so that is why stack memory is important so whenever you have you have you will use the call instruction in your program at that time 085 when execute that instruction 085 will use stack memory to push to push the 16 bit address into that stack memory okay so that from the subroutine when you are coming back to your main program so that you will understand what actually microprocessor will do microprocessor will at that time when returning time it will take that 16 bit address from the stack memory and return to the main memory address main memory address so that is the address of main memory so i will give you the example so that it, these things will be clearly understood by yourself okay so basically here i have written a small code with all these examples of jump jump conditional call instruction return instruction push and pop instruction so these are the instruction which are used 
in the branching and machine control group okay so actually what i am doing i am i am initializing my tag pointer this is the very much essential thing that you need to do initialization of your stack pointer because in this particular program i am going to use stack okay so if you want to use stack then you have to define the stack pointer otherwise the default value of stack pointer you know what is the default value of stack pointer whenever you execute your program the default value of your stack pointer is you can see here 000 so 8085 processor will take this this as a default value of your stack pointer okay so so you can so what actually you uh, can do you can define your stack pointer so that you will understand that what is the stack pointer value okay so it is better to define a stack pointer value so here i have defined the stack pointer as fff so this is the location starting location of your stack pointer okay this is the starting location of your stack pointer and you know that concept in that location there will be no data there will no data will be pushed in this location there will there no data will be pushed actually why this is the way of stack is handled okay so stack pointer this is i am you know, what i am doing i am giving a 16 bit data into stack pointer register i am not using the stack memory using the stack memory and initialization of stack pointer register is totally different thing here i have not used anything related to external memory it is just an initialization of a register which is there internally in executor processor that is the stack pointer then what i am doing i am i am moving a data into accumulator i am adding data another data with the accumulator okay just a addition then depending upon the condition of carry depending upon the status of your carry flag i am taking the decision if there is no carry then my program will jump to l1 location okay here you can see l1 location if there is no carry then my program will jump to l1 location so why i am using jnc after adi because after addition arithmetic operation all flags will change so there is a chance of getting carry or not getting carry so according to that i am taking here the decision if there is no carry then it will jump to this location l1 okay and what it will do in that location in that location i am calling a subroutine one okay so here you can see i am calling a subroutine one s1 so i am calling a subroutine one s1 so so program will go to this location s1 location because it, i am calling this so what i am doing there i am just initializing hl register pair 5555 okay and after initializing hl register pair i am pushing that pair into the stack using push instruction okay so i am push i am inserting that data into the stack using push instruction and then i am returning back from my stack i am sorry from my subroutine i am returning back from my subroutine to main program okay so the ret i have to write this ret instruction here so ret instruction will return to which location It it will return to a particular location. So what in which location it will return? It will return. So you have called this from this instruction. You have called this subroutine one from particularly from this line of code. Okay. And then which is the next instruction? This is the next instruction. So return actually this return instruction actually uh, return instruction actually. return from the subroutine to the this instruction address okay so this is the next instruction that needs to be executed so it will return to this next instruction that need to be that needs to be executed location so this is the location where it will return hlt so it will execute this instruction end of your program so this is the way this program execute if there is no carry so what is this program is doing if there is no carry of addition it will uh, actually calling a subroutine one there it is doing some operation then coming back to the main program and then it is ending here okay and then here also i am going to show you if there is carry then what happens if there is carry then it will 
this line will not execute it completely remember what i am saying very important terms this instruction will not be executed completely why i am saying not completely execution because in complete execution this instruction will take actually it will take actually three missing uh, three uh, three bytes of size and it will take three missing cycles of four page memory read and memory read and it will take 4 plus 3 plus 3 10 this day that is the case for complete execution of this instruction but when there is carry this instruction jncl1 will not be executed completely that means it will take only two missing cycles but it will take three bytes and it will take 70 state 4 plus 3 okay because why it is taking uh, one less missing cycle because here there is a carry so as the carry is there so this line of code will not be completely executed because if there is no not not it is not necessary to execute complete line it is not necessary to jump on this location l1 right that's why this instruction will not be completely executed if there is a carry okay so how many missing cycle is taking when there is a carry two missing cycle why two because why not it is one taking only one missing cycle because the first missing cycle is of code phase that will be taken by this instruction okay and when it will it will actually microprocessor is doing of code phase of this instruction it, it is not possible by the microprocessor to check the status of your carry flag so after of code phase when this instruction goes to the next missing cycle that is the next memory read missing cycle there during memory read operation the back of the site the status of your carry flag is also checked so there after checking the status of your carry flag by the processor processor understand that carry flag value is 1 so it, this line of code is not required to execute completely so it will just stop the execution of this uh, instruction there so it, so that means what of code page and memory read these two missing cycles are there only okay so two missing cycles 70 state but three byte size it is taking okay if it is not uh, completely executed but also it is taking three byte of size because three byte of size is not actually something which is depends upon any condition of your carry it is the size three byte size is for loading this data into the memory okay so this three byte will be there so this is the done for this so there is a carry so it will not jump to l1 it will go to the next in the instruction that is calling of subroutine 2 so it will call the second subroutine that is s2 in the s2 what it is doing it is taking out the data data it is taking out the data from the stack where it is taking out the data in the bc register pair okay so in the bc register pair it will take out the data from the stack then it will return to the main program so in which location it will return it will return to the next instruction that needs to be executed that is jmp n that is jmp n okay then then what happened so jmp n means what now jmp means this is a unconditional jump the program returns from the second subroutine to jmp end location this there is there it is written that unconditional jump to which label end label so in the end label it is written halt so end of the program so program end there okay so that is the program so here you can see in this program you have used all instruction all unconditional call instruction the unconditional return instruction conditional jump instruction unconditional jump instruction okay so this is the this is the program what we are uh, i have shown here for to understand all this instruction operation okay now then you can do the experiments by your own now if i execute this program so let me just take so these locations why i have taken this location can you can you guess why i have taken this location here because you see that these are the location i have taken from triple f a b c d e f because these are the location of your stack 
because your stack you have started your stack from the FFFA. So I, I should not write FFFA first, then go to the next location. After FFFA, what is the next location address? Can you tell me? In 8085, we have 16 bit address bar. So using 16 bit address bar, the maximum number that we can enter that is FFFA. So after that, they are Physically, there is no location is available in your memory look in your external memory chip. Okay, so basically, I have used for that purpose FFFF is the last location for your stack pointer, and then I have decreased this location. This is the last location. If it is the last location, then you cannot go beyond this. So basically, wh where you have to go, you have to go um, uh, FFF E D C like this. You have to decrease this location and also this is um, this is the thing that you need to do whenever you are working with the stack memory right stack memory because stack memory is handled in a different way of your normal memory handling process in normal memory handling process if you want to insert a data so first location suppose you insert a data into uh, this location so FFFA. so you have insert one data here if you want to insert the next data you can insert manually uh, into the previous location of this FFA, FFA, FFF9. Into that location, you can insert the data manually. But normally, what happens if you just uh, consider that processor is pushing the data continuously into the memory location, then it will go to the next location. Normally, that, that is happening in all these RAM, ROM cells, right? It will increase the next, it will go to the next location, insert the next data, go to the next location, insert the data. So whenever you are handling the main memory, normal memory, you when you are inserting the data, the address is increased. FFFF A to B, then C, this way it will increase and data will be inserted. But in the stack memory, it is reversed. That means when data is inserted, your location address will be decreased. Okay. So initially it is located at this location. When the data will be inserted, location will be decreased and data will be inserted. Location will be decreased, data will be inserted. Okay. And also one another important thing that whenever data is in, uh, inserted into the stack, uh, uh, it is uh, it is in that in this environment it is not possible to insert only eight bit data. Data. You have to insert a sixteen bit data. PUSA push instruction will insert a register pair content into the stack. That means it will insert a 16 bit data into the stack. It is not inserting 8 bit data. POPB, POP instruction, POP B. So it will pop out 16 bit data into BC register pair. It is not actually pop out the 8 bit data into a one register. It is not pop out the data of one location into register B. It is actually popping out the two data from two locations into register B and C, BC register pair. So that is that is the thing you need to remember. So this is also a different thing with respect to normal memory of operation. In normal memory operation, we can insert 8-bit data or you can insert 16-bit data. Okay, but in stack memory, you cannot insert or take out 8-bit data at a time. You have to take out 16-bit data at a time, or you have to insert 16-bit data at a time. Okay, so here you have to use register pair for, for inserting or taking out the data from the stack memory. And stack memory and stack pointer register are totally different thing. Stack pointer register, this is the SP. What is the function of SP? SP function is to locate the top of the stack location. What is the top location? What is the top location address of your stack memory? That will be there in SP register. So that will be there in SP register automatically. You don't need to do it. What you are doing here, actually you are specifying a this address in the stack pointer but you you have not do anything here in in, in this code uh, you have have you done anything related to stack pointer in this throughout this code offline no so that that does not mean that the stack pointer value will be fffff always be like this it is not a constant value you will see here that initially this stack pointer register value will be FFFA, but it will change according to the operation. We will see that. So, so that means who is actually changing the stack pointer register value? The processor. You are not changing. You just initialize the stack pointer. 
and rest of the operation related to to stack pointer register are done by the processor itself okay so stack pointer is actually what is the function of stack pointer register to locate the top of the stack location so stack pointer register actually holds the address of the stack top of the stack memory location so if you are initializing initializing this thing with fff so that means you are initializing that this is the top location of your stack okay so like that okay so so let me just execute this program first so you will understand everything so first line i execute so my stack pointer value is now fff okay second line will be executed so accumulator value is now f2 third line is executed and the addition is done to so 23 f2 so what is there there is carry so jump on no carry this line will not be completely executed so if it will, if it is completely executed then it will take three machine cycles and otherwise it will take two machine cycles so here you can see it is now nine so previously it was seven so two machine cycles it is not completely executed so now program is jump to this location means there is no jumping program comes to the next location that is called s2 this line okay so i am calling the subroutine 2 here so okay go to the subroutine 2 so this is my subroutine 2 so when i am calling the subroutine 2 you see once this line is executed this line okay let me start from the beginning again okay so you see this done done this is done here now it is not executed it is pointing to this location so stack pointer value is here f f f f you have not done anything related to stack pointer you just call this subroutine so what is the information we know whenever subroutine is called the location the address location of your next uh, instruction will be inserted into the stack okay normally this things happen internally but in this particular environment what is happening you will see that a location of this instruction will be inserted into the stack okay so what is the location of this instruction 800a so here you see that already it is inserted because i have just executed my program once so here you see that this done so it is inserted into the stack 800a the upper 8 bit goes to first location fffe next 8 bit goes to this location this is the lower 8 bit this is the higher 8 bit data of your address okay which address it is actually 800a is the address of this instruction call s2 this line instruction is address of 800a okay so this is inserted into the stack but you have uh, noticed that nothing is inserted into the starting location why because this is the operation of the stack how stack is handled this is the stack pointer location it will decrease by one data is inserted again it will decrease by one the next data will be inserted 16 bit data is inserted completion completed okay so for initially it is here it will decrease by one the stack pointer register decrease by one data is inserted hp minus 1 again data is inserted so currently what is your top location of your stack pointer sorry what is the currently what is the top location of your stack memory not stack pointer stack memory this is the uh, top location of your stack memory so here is your stack pointer so stack pointer value is what fffd you don't do anything on this stack pointer microprocessor itself change the value of the stack pointer according to the operation of your stack memory so data is inserted into the stack you have not inserted any uh, instru instruction to insert for insertion the data into stack right you have not used push instruction there okay in this call s2 you just call this subroutine to you have not pushed any data microprocessor push the data which data the address location of this call instruction okay in this environment it post this data into this call into this stack 800a okay and then it will go to that subroutine okay so this is a subroutine 2 so in this subroutine 2 what is the instruction written pop b so 
pop b means what the stack pointer will so whenever there is pop operation so how that pop operation operation will be executed so current location of your stack pointer from that current location of your stack pointer data will be popped out to the lower register bc is the register pair so data will be popped out to c then stack pointer will increase by one then it will pop out the data in that location into higher register that is b so 80 will be there so first what is happening it is currently stack pointer is currently fffd it is decreased by one data is popped out then it, it, again it will be increased by one so it will be at ff ff location data is popped out to b so after this pop operation you will see that your stack pointer value will again change change where it is now currently ff ff location it is here why it is here because you have done this pop operation so when you are you have when you are doing this pop operation from the again i am saying okay just listen so when i am doing the pop operation here you can see fffd so that is the location of your stack it is not executed pop of instruction is not it is pointing it is not executed once it executed then the stack pointer register value will change because these two data data from the location fffd and fffe will be popped out to where bc register pair that is the pop b instruction okay how it will be popped out so currently stack pointer register is fffd so fffd from that location stack pointer will increase by one and data will be popped out so after first pop out data what is the uh, stack pointer location fffe then again it will increase by one data will be popped out so then its value will be fff so once this pop instruction is done the value of stack pointer register is fff that means your top of stack location actually now fff okay so so now what you can do you can after this you have to return so return is very interesting instruction return means what it, it will return to your next instruction that is jmp and this instruction it will return here so this is the subroutine of two lines of code okay it will return to this line jmp and so when it will return to this line how it will return it will return to this line by check i mean you don't need to do anything microprocessor will get the data return address from the stack okay so it will get its return address from the stack and it will return to this location okay so you will see again the stack pointer and value will change why it will change because when you are returning microprocessor will take take out the data understand this concept return means pop out operation basically when you are uh, use when you are inserting call instruction in your program it actually you are in, uh, you are doing a push operation call instruction is doing push operation because it is inserting the address into the stack memory return instruction is actually doing pop operation because it is taking out the data from the stack memory and putting that data into the address bus because in that location you have to return back okay so this is the pop operation so return means pop operation so here, here you have seen that whenever you call this subroutine to the stack pointer value changed okay it is initially it was fffff call instruction execution done it become it value becomes where fffd right it is changed automatically because microprocessor will just insert this data it is zero a so data will change stack pointer register data will change okay again so in the subroutine whatever operation you can do that is not not a problem but at the end you have to write this instruction return so when this return instruction will be executed again the stack pointer value will change okay so when call instruction was the uh, invoked in your program 
data is pushed into this stack when return instruction is invoked in your program data will be popped out from this stack so when it will popped out obviously the stack pointer value will increase right it is not decrease so insertion push operation decrease the stack pointer register value pop instruction increase the stack pointer register value sp becomes sp plus 2 after pop operation right after one pop operation your sp becomes sp plus 2 after one push operation your sp becomes sp minus 2 because you are inserting 16 bit data or you are taking out 16 bit data so sp becomes sp plus 2 or sp minus 2 right so here also in the return instruction sp becomes sp plus 2 but what i have told you this is the last location of uh, address location of your 16 bit address bus there is i cannot go beyond that so i cannot go beyond that means what actually it means that uh, i cannot go to the 17 bit representation of your memory address but i can ignore that 17th bit if i add one with this stack pointer so where i will go i will go 0000 that is the starting location of your ram or rom okay so that will happen here you will see your stack pointer value becomes 0001 because sp plus 2 So plus two means f f f f f f f f plus two means what zero 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 one. So you are actually coming back to the starting location of your RAM or ROM chip. Okay. So the stack pointer value is now is is zero 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 one. Okay. So why it is become zero 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 one? Because can you see any changes in stack memory? No, you cannot see any changes in stack memory when you do the pop operation. why because pop operation means you are just copying the data from this to any of the memory to memory locations and copy and doing paste operation so in the copy paste operation obviously the source data will not change so you will not change will not see any change in stack memory okay but the stack pointer register value will change okay so this com program comes to this location and here this is unconditional jump so it will jump to this location so your program will end here okay so this is the operation that is related to stack and uh, it's a push pop operation all jump operation unconditional jump operation okay so basically what we understand we can use stack according to our need okay so uh, here i have initialized the stack if i just forget to initialize this stack so what microprocessor will do microprocessor will not go, do uh, take this location so it will take which location it will take this location you see this is the location 0000 so what happened now you see the difference what is happening so there is carry so this call is to subroutine to will be called and which location which data will be inserted into this stack which data will be inserted into this stack can you tell me it, it will insert 8007 into this stack okay so where it is inserted this into the stack because the first location is initial location was 0000 in that location nothing will be inserted it will decreased by 1 sp becomes sp minus 1 so 0000 minus 1 means f f f f it will insert the higher 8 bit data that is 80 and it will again decreased by 1 so sp becomes sp minus 2 finally it will insert the lower 8 bit data that is 07 that address location 8007 is the address location of call s2 starting location of this instruction 8007 so it will insert that data into this stack okay and then it will pop out the data so which data will be popped out your currently your stack pointer is fffe so fffe this from this location 07 will be popped out into the c then 80 will be popped out into the b right so you see popped out 8007 into b c and then it is comes to this location okay so after pop out there is return instruction so again i am just going to execute this program uh, 
I miss one thing. So here is done. Call operation is in done. So your program is here. So your FFFE. So pop operation is done. So once you've done the pop operation, what is the location of your stack pointer? Zero 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 zero. Why? Because it is increased by one. Pop out the first data into C. Again, it will increase by one from this location. So your value becomes zero 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 zero. Pop out this thing, second data into B. So this is the pop out of data, and this is the location of the stack pointer. From this location, if you again do the pop operation, because return whenever you are invoking return instruction, it is doing the pop operation. So pop operation means it will increase the stack pointer register. Okay, you cannot see any changes into the stack memory content. It will be same. You see, it is done. Nothing is changed into the stack memory content. But what is the stack pointer value? It is increased by HP plus two. So HP was zero 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 plus two means zero 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 two. You are getting HP plus two value into the stack pointer register, and you are coming to this jump end instruction. It is executed. Your program ends here. Okay. So this is all about the conditions when there is a carry in your program. Okay. So this what this is the, this the things these things are happen if there is a carry. And if I take a value where there is no carry, okay. So what happened? You see. So I have not changed the content of stack. Okay. Suppose like this, it was there. Something is there. No problem in that. It is executed. So there is no carry. So this line will be completely executed. So it jumps to this. Now subroutine one will be called. Which data will be inserted into the stack? The content of PC 800D, 800D, 800D is the location of this instruction 800D. Okay, so this data will be inserted into the stack. You see 800D inserted into the stack. Okay, and what is the value of your stack pointer register? FFAP. Same thing. I have not initialized the stack pointer, so by default it is. It was taken by 0000, so it becomes FFFP once the data is inserted into the stack. Then what I am doing? Initializing HL register pair. It becomes H5555. Then what I am doing? I am inserting some data into the stack. So which data I am inserting? Content of HL. So in data is inserted into the stack. So you can see the changes occur into the stack memory whenever you are inserting a data. But whenever you are Pop out any data. Pop out data from the stack. You will not. You will see no change in the stack memory. You will see only change in stack pointer register. So what is the stack pointer register after inserting the push h instruction? A55 inserted into FFFD because initial previously it was at FFFP. That is the location of stack pointer. Then push h instruction was uh, instruction is executed. So it becomes SP minus one. Insert the higher data, higher 8-bit data. So content of H, then it will in HP minus one again. So insert the lower date 8-bit data that is again 55 the content of L. Okay. So this is inserting. Then return instruction. Again return instruction means pop out instruction. So I cannot see any change in stack point term, uh, stack memory. Sorry, I cannot see any change in stack memory, but I will see change in stack pointer register. Can you guess what will be the stack pointer register value after execution of this return instruction? It is a pop instruction, so it will increase the stack pointer value by two. So F F F C D E, so its value becomes E. So F F F E, you cannot see any changes in stack memory because it is a pop operation, but you, you can see the changes in stack pointer register. So your program ends here. Okay. So this is all about this stack and call for jump instructions. I hope this thing is clear to everyone. Okay. So I think I can stop my discussion here. Or this is just for showing you the branch and machine control instruction for push, pop, call, jump, return instruction. There are EIDI instructions. These are the interrupt related instructions which are normally not used in normal program. Read, see this two instruction. This is also interrelated instruction, which is not basically used to uh, used in this 
in this current environment okay so because you can see you can see that these are the interrupts and whenever we are talking about the interrupt we have to connect some peripheral device with 8085 then then only we can start interrupting so to interrupt 8085 some interrupting device should be connected with 8085 and that thing is not possible to do in this environment so i am not going to show the operation of this instruction here and uh, there is r uh, there is RST. RST what? This is also restart. This is also instruction related to interrupt. Software interrupt. Remember RST 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So these are the software interrupts. There are total 8 software interrupts. Okay, 0 to 7. So you can insert the software interrupts in your program. Okay, this RST instruction is kind of your, uh, you can say this is kind of your call instruction. Instead of Instead of call instruction, I can use RST zero here. Okay, so RST zero means what? Or say RST one. Better I use RST one. So RST one means what? RST one means it will. It is actually means that it will in it will uh, transfer the program to a particular location, which is the location of restart one software interrupt. And what is the location of this restart one? RST1 vector address, what will be the vector address? So, because in case of interrupt, you know that we are talking about vector address, these are the vector interrupt, and we are talking, we will talk about, uh, we have already talked about this thing, interrupt service routine. So, whenever there is an interrupt, program sequence will transfer to interrupt service routine, right? So, RST1, so same thing, RST1 or call instruction is quite, quite same. In case of RST1, you, your program will transfer to which location? Interest service, the service routine location of your RST1 uh, vector interrupt. Okay. And what is the vector address? So you have to multiply 8 with this. Okay. So if you multiply 8, so it will be, it becomes 0008. So it will actually transfer your program sequence to 0008. Let me just execute this program. So this is done done okay so okay so there is no carry so program will not actually do this operation so let me just take another data say f okay so if i execute so i will see what change so it will come here okay so rst1 you can see what is rst1 rst1 means cf it's corresponding hex code is cf once is executed, so once is executed, then what happened? Once is executed, then what happened actually? So your program sequence actually go, goes nowhere. It starts from this because I have not written anything related to this interrupt, software interrupt. So to write a code related to software interrupt, I have to write something related to that RST instruction. Okay, so what I have to write actually in that instruction, suppose RST1, in that RST1 means which location actually it will invoke <coughs> 0008. Okay, so basically here in this environment, I uh, if I want to show this operation of the instruction, it will be a little, uh, little difficult because there is no interrupt sources we are actually using. So better I will stop this thing here. I will discuss in the next next lecture there i will get some more data about this instruction then i will share that thing with you okay so better i just stop this uh, talking about this rst1 here so let me just finish my discussion over, over this call return uh, post pop instruction not any instruction related to your interrupts because rst is also ream theme and uh, eidia all are this kind of instruction better i can go for this one which one let me just go to this this set of instructions just one second i can go to this instruction pchl okay so pchl i can show what is the operation of pchl suppose you have uh, suppose you have written this line of code mvia uh, 54 okay then uh, lxi H, uh, say you have written the address 
you have initialized the address 6666 okay so then you just you have written pchl okay so in in case of pchl say you have written something into that location say i just take 6666 this location here and write some date program into these locations which program i will write say i write i write mbi mbi what mbi a uh, mbi t comma mbi t comma uh, 76 okay and uh, let me just show you one by one so i take this data okay this is the next data So PCHL, okay, E9. So now you see that you are actually at eight, this location, 8005 location, okay? Once you execute this line, you are now at which location? 8006 location, okay? Because you have not written anything related to that uh, address the 666 location okay let me just write one thing into that address okay so 0 e and 76 so if i write this thing i think in this environment whether it will work or not i have to check so what i am doing instead of writing this thing here i have written this code line of code there okay so let me just execute and see what is actually happening so actually in this Yes, it is not actually happening the way I want to happen because the function of PCHL is to look, you see that load the program counter with HL pair. So it will load the content of HL pair into, into the program counter. So if when it will uh, load the content of HL pair into the program counter, so in the next look, if I execute this line, this code, so program counter value should change to 6666. So so in that case, if I execute the next, if I go to the next line execution, then in that 6666, in that location, whatever the data I have written, that thing needs to be executed. Means I can, it is kind of a jump instruction. Jump means in if I want to jump, let's say if I want to jump, okay, JMP at which location? The location is L1 okay and uh, say in that location i am jumping okay so and so i i i use uh, the, is some instruction here inrc and say this is my the location jump location okay so there i can jump so jump means say i am doing here another operation inrh so end of this program so hlt okay so this way I can show you. So if I execute this program, so what it will do? This program, what program will do? So it will jump to this location, INRH, and there it will increase the content of HL register pair, H register only. So content of H register will increase by 167, end of your program. Okay. So this thing I can do using jump instruction. I can whether I can do this operation using uh, your uh, uh, say uh, whether this, uh, this thing I can do using an, any other instruction like PCHL. Okay, yes, I can do it. Logically, I can do it. I don't know whether we can do it in this uh, simulator or not, but logically, I can do this operation. To do this operation, what I need to do, I need to put this location value into the HL register pair instead of 6666. Okay. So what is the uh, the value of this location? So after before halt it is there. So the value of this location is 8008. Okay. Uh, sorry, not 800. Sorry, this is a one byte instruction, right? So 8008. So value of this address address of this uh, INRH is 8008, right? So I can put 
800A here, okay, and see what is actually happened in this particular environment. So this one is done. So PC value is 800A. You can see, and and, and nothing is actually happened there. Okay, so PC value is now this. It is loaded with 800A content of HL registered pair. And in 800A location is in that location whether any data anything is written? No. So if I write something into that location, say in 800A, I am writing this code 76. Okay, 76 means end of the program. So let me just see whether it will work or not. So it will go there. So your program sequence jump to that location. So program sequence will jump to this location 800A. Okay. Well, if I write this one also in INRL, okay. And then I execute. So you can see that your program sequence is jumping to that location, right? Here it is the code actually. So if you want to use PCHL, it is kind of thing that you can do like this way. It's PCHL. So what is PCHL? It will look actually this address 800A. So 800A. So in that 800A, what you have written 76. That's why it will executing this line of code. If I if I write another code, say this one INR uh, INR M. Okay, INR M. So what happened? Let me just execute. So PCHL program jumps to that location. So which location? 800A location. There it will get INR M. So INR M means what? In INR M means this thing will be increased. So in 800A in that location, I previously I have written. 34 is there, so here it will become 35 and it end of your program. Okay. So, so according to your program, what is there in that location 8000 A? So in that location actually you have written this hex code. According to program 34, this thing is there. Okay. So you want to jump in that location. Okay. So you can use this instruction jump L1. Okay. But instead of using jump L1, you are using actually PCHL. So you can do it. But here, L, what is the address of your L1, INRH? What is that address? Uh, I'm going a little uh, far here. INRH. Can you tell me what is the address, uh, hex code of INRH? Let me just cross check. INRH. Twenty-four. Okay. So. Uh, and it is 24 here I'm writing HLT okay so your total program is taking uh, starting location is 8000 and ending location 800B and uh, this INR H is at the location 24 8008 so if I write here 8008 so I can expect my program will jump to this location okay Yes, it is jumping to that location. So now you can understand that PCHL is something like like your jump. So here I don't need to use this label. Okay. So what I am jumping PCHL, I am jumping to this location 
8008 and this location actually the uh, location of your data of your main program right jump instruction so when, when we are using jump instruction remember that we are jumping from one location of your main program to another location of your main program so what which address you need to specify into the hn if you want to use a pchn instruction the address any address where you want to jump in your main program right so like this so if i uh, can i write this one 8000 if I execute this code, if you see what happened, yes, I can go this direction also. I can jump this kind, this kind, this is kind of a loop I can create using this instruction. Okay. Otherwise, I can also do this operation. Okay. So I found that 8000, I want to jump to this particular line. Okay. So 8008. So 8008, it will jump to this particular line. Okay. So if I execute, this is unconditional jump. It will jump to this particular line. Okay. So before using PCHL, you need to calculate at which location you want to jump in your main program. Okay. You calculate that thing, then you use that address as a content of your HL register pair. Okay. If I want to jump to this location, INRM. So what is the location 8008? I can also jump to this location INRM 8008. Okay, so then I have to use that address into I have to use that address into the HL register pair. Okay, so it will jump to that. So this is a conditional jump, not conditional jump. It is PCHL is equivalent to unconditional jump. Okay, instruction. So unconditional jump instruction is quite it can be done using PCHL instruction. Okay, that thing you can understand from this. And there are XTHL, XPHL. These are the stack, extend the top of the stack with HL register pair. Copy HL register pair into stack pointer. Okay, so by this using these two instruction, you can change the stack pointer. Okay, how we can change the stack pointer? You can exchange the content of HL register pair with stack pointer register. So your stack pointer register value will change. That means it will uh, then locate any different address. Okay. So let if I take this thing. Okay. Okay. There are two set of locations I have taken. Okay. So say this is the one stack location. This is the another another stack second stack locations. Okay. So if I uh, say if I initialize my stack pointer with this first location FFFF, then I initialize my uh, HL register pair with 666B. Then and say now I, I use push instruction, push H. Okay, so I will I will push the content of HL into the stack. Again, I do PUSH, push B. So it will insert 00, 0 because nothing is there in B series. It will insert 0000, 0, 0, 0 into the stack, but stack pointer register value will change. Then if I if I exchange the top of the stack using XTHL, exchange the top of the stack pointer. Is, what is XTHL? Exchange the top of the stack with HL register pair. So it is not actually change the content of stack pointer register it will change the content of top of the stack location okay and SPHL it will copy the HL register pair into the stack pointer it will change the stack pointer register value okay these two are two different things so XTHL means I am exchanging the top of the stack location value with HL register pair okay so uh, what is the top of the stack location value here so let me just change this thing this is done first then this is done second okay okay so what you will see just execute this program so fffff stack pointer then it becomes 666b hl register pair okay then push b so you are pushing what content of bc register pair content that is 0000 so content of stack pointer register is fff it will be decreased by 2 
because this is push operation decrease by 2 and what you have inserted there 0 0 0 0 and why you can see that some data is already in this location because it was there inserted previous or in previous operation okay it is not inserted during the current in program it is inserted in previous program so the previous data that is not needed here in this program then what i am doing i am doing again another push operation so again your stack pointer register value change ffb minus 2 done, is done from ffb minus 2 it is now ffb two things is inserted one is content of h 66 another is content of l 6b okay then i am executing this xthl so i am what i am doing exchange the top of the stack value with hl register pair so, so i will not see any changes what happened push b so it is pushed into the stack then xthl so when you ex do the xthl when executed exchange exchange you can see here exchange the top of the stack with hl register pair exchange between hl register pair and top of stack top of stack means 6b and 6c and hl register pair is 66 6b okay so it will be decreased stack pointer value will not change ffb okay but wh what is happening into h is totally uh, un I, I don't think it is something happening in the correct way because there should some uh, there should be some value at h okay mm. Uh, okay, let me give some value into register uh, LXI BC. LXI B, so 4532. Okay, so execute first, second line, third line. Okay, so 4532, then push H, done. Then it becomes vanished. Okay, so again, again, I'm doing same thing, push B. Okay, so not push B, say on this, okay, push H, what I am doing push H means, I, uh, I can do the push H operation first here, so I will see any changes occurring into the stack, okay, so here FFFF, so now first FFFF, now this is done, BC and HL. So push B means what you will see that content of stack will change 66 and 68. Currently it is showing 45, 32. It will change 66, 6B. Okay. Push B, it will again change 45, 32. Why? In this VC register pair, you have 45, 32. Okay, very good. So what is your current stack pointer location, register location? FFFB. What is the content of stack? So there are four data inserted into the stack. Okay. XTHL. So what it will do? It will extend the top of the stack locations value with HL register pair. Okay. So L content will go to this FFFB and FFFB content will come to the L. So 4532666B. It will be exchanged. 666B. Okay, so I think uh, this instruction is not actually executing in a proper way in the simulator. Or am I doing something wrong instead of taking this thing here? 
I take a different value, say seven 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 seven. Let me just execute. Okay, say I instead of doing this or if I if, if I do this. So what actually happening? All this content of this. So if I this, okay, okay, very good. I just want to see at which point this instruction will work. So in this case, you just I just make everything zero zero here. Okay, say this is the starting location of your stack. So I make this thing also zero zero. Okay, very good. Now I start execution of my first program eight thousand. So this is inserted into a BC register pair, and I ins inserted this data into top of the stack. One, I am executing a STHL means I am exchanging the content of the top of stack with HL register pair. So HL register pair content is zero 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 zero. So zero zero is transferred, but why the content of H vanishes totally? I don't understand. So that means it is not as Executed properly in this environment stage, so I need I cannot explain this instruction operation. Okay, thank you very good. So let me go to the next instruction SPHL then. Okay, instead of this, I show you SPHL here. So in case of SPHL, what happens? So stack pointer in case of SPHL, I can actually move my stack into a different location. Okay, where say six 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 B. Six 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 B. This is the location. Okay, so here I am. I can. There are two stack locations. There are two stack. You can see here. So one stack location start from stack uh, stack pointer here. Another stack location I can start from this location. How using SPHL. Okay, so for that reason, what I need to do, I have to initialize my stack pointer. This then this is the HL register pair content. That is the Address of the next stack location, and then I can initialize BC register pair and push that data into the normal stack. Okay, then I exchange. Then I use SPHL. SPHL means what? Copy HL register to stack pointer. So stack pointer value will change. It will be uh, changed to 666B. And there, if I insert and uh, again push B, then I can insert the data into a new stack. Okay. So this is what actually I'm meaning. I means here. So you see that what is pushed into the stack four five three two. SPHL executed stack pointer value will change six 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 B. Okay. If you insert where it will be inserted in these two locations. Okay. So this is the push B instruction. Okay. Got it. So this is SPHL instruction here. I have shown you how we can use two different stack memories. One set, one stack memory, stack one, another stack memory, stack two in a single same program. There, if I want to swap between these two, then I have to do this way. I have to use my instruction SPHL in this particular way. Okay, so it will actually insert, it actually give you this thing. Okay, push B means it will now work into the stack pointer two. I will go back to stack pointer one. So in that case, what you have to do if you want to go back to the stack pointer one? So you have to remember that what operation you have done. So there is no actually a way you can go back stack pointer directly. Okay, like how you can jump from stack one to stack two is possible by SPHL. There is no such way you can go back to the stack pointer uh, stack one actually. Okay, because uh, if I use SPHL. If I change the value of HL now, I can change it again. Xi A, but which value I will specify? Whether I have to specify FFFF, I can do this one. So in that case, whatever the data is present in the stack one will be again overwritten. Okay, again it will be overwritten. Otherwise, I have to remember the location of stack pointer where the operation, my last operation done in stack one. Okay, that is the location FFFB. So if I do this one, then if I can initialize FFFB there. So after initializing FFFB there, I can use this instruction 
push h so i will see that my data will not be overwritten you see here you jump from stack 1 to stack 2 again you are jump from stack 2 to stack 1 there you are inserting this two data oh sorry i have not jumped it yet uh, sorry sorry so here i have to jump again it's p h l okay so i jumped again so and i pushed so you see at 4532 was there initially then it is fffd okay but i have to remember this address okay or somehow i have to store that address uh, into a uh, register any other register pair so after this push operation i can use uh, the uh, instruction like which instruction can i use to store the location of stack pointer into a register pair into a register pair is it possible to uh, get the stack pointer value into some register pair current location of your stack pointer value into some register pair can you do it can i do it using this no can i do it using this no exchange will not work here lxi it is used to initialize it is not used to read the content of stack pointer okay so if i want to read the content of stack pointer which instruction can i use hmm? i can use that instruction in the, uh, not in direct way what is coming in my mind okay I don't know means if I want to read the content of current location of stack pointer I can use xthl right because it will read the content of stack point top of the stack location into hl register pair okay so uh, I can use xthl here but I don't know whether it will work or not xthl okay no that is actually required okay Let me see what actually happened here. So this done, push B is done, XTHL. So yeah, it's 666B, okay, 666B. Okay, no, I cannot use here this thing, okay. Why I cannot use here? Because uh, if I use XTHL, then again use SPHL, then both way I'm using the uh, this thing okay so what i can do i need to stop this execution here and i can get the data whatever they are in uh, hl register pair into some other register pair say mov which pair i am not using de so move d h mov uh, e l okay so if i use this thing then then i hope that i will get the data so push b so once push b instruction operated fffd is the current location so that location i want into my hl register pair no i am not getting so what i am getting 32 okay let me see what actually happens there so nothing is going into from h to d and 32 is going here okay so here it is done so in that case FFFD, I know that, but I don't want to use this instruction. What I want to use here? Yes, basically this operation is not actually happened correctly because XTHL is not working in this environment. I don't know why, but uh, if I uh, if I do it using XTHL, then I can easily get the data of uh, current low stack pointer location into HL. And then I can easily do the uh, read the data of stack pointer location and save it into D register pair. Again, get back the data 
into HL again and do the next operation. Okay. So these things cannot be shown here, but that the I hope you understand the logic. Means what actually I can I I'm, I want to do here. I just want to read the top of stack location into HL and I save that data into D register pair. Then again, uh, once I get the data into HL into D register pair, my this data is uh, changed. Okay, so. I, I should write this thing here. Okay. So I'm initializing again my HL register pair to the new location of your stack pointer. Instead of writing uh, initializing stack pointer, I can do this. Then I can use SPHL here. Okay. So now your new stack pointer value will be 6B. Six, six data will be inserted there, push B. Okay. Then after push B, uh, again, before using again SPHL, you have to get back the data from D register pair to HL. So MOB H from D, MOB E from L. Okay. So once I get the data here, then I can again use SPHL. Now this SPHL actually uh, actually returns to the stack stack one. Okay, you have the data of stack one location, so you will come back to stack one. So this is the way you can operate once uh, once two stack in a same program. But I don't uh, I cannot say that how why this SPHL instruction is not working in this environment. But if it works in this way, you can do it. Otherwise. Without this, you can also do it using DAD instruction, DAD SP, okay, that with SP. So, so initial value of your HL register pair is 0, 0, okay. So here you see initial value of your HL register pair is 0, 0. So once you do the add operation, you get the stack pointer location into HL register pair, you save that value into DE. Okay, then you you go to the next set of uh, uh, data. There you change the value again. You get back. You see that your stack pointer is changed to stack address of the stack, next stack location six 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 nine. Again, you are getting back the data into HL. So HL is here. So it will change. Okay, when it will change, you can again go back to your stack one. Okay. So there you can insert your new data into that stack. Push H. So what value it will push? FFFD. Okay. So this thing, this way you can also do without using XTHL. Same operation. Okay. So you can do this way. I hope this thing is clear. Okay. So and there is no NOP and halt. These are the normal operation. Machine control, no operation and halt. So everything is I have covered in this branch and con machine control group. I hope this thing, this makes it clear the concept. If you have any doubt, you can uh, mail me your doubt or WhatsApp me. Thank you very much.